again we bring greetings from the warm heart of Africa Uganda um, this is our country presentation and we appreciate the privilege to to make a presentation we would like to give some bit of background and uh, share with you our approach on MER reporting and share a bit of our benefits and experiences and lessons and then some challenges and gaps and a few recommendations so in terms of background we are one of those countries that participated in the MER training back in 2014 um, and we have been able to roll out um, dating. We have we do user administration. We did the IPSIL initialization. We have trained in-country users, and um, we do submit data via um, dating. Initially, we did direct data entry, and we got into very many challenges. So we chose to move away from that and do data exchange. We've been doing data exchange since the SAPR and we have a few you know, lessons for ourselves and also maybe for other users. Um, in terms of our reporting, um, reporting, I don't know whether this is very clear, but this side shows the results. We get our results from various systems. We have the national system that deals with the OVC. So the data is reported from the communities or CSOs or IPs via the district to a central MIS managed through the Minister of Gender. Um, we also have IPs providing data directly for indicators that are not available from the national systems. For the health uh, in the Ministry of Health related indicators where the data is picked from the registers to monthly or quarterly reports to the national DHIS2. So those are the kind of systems from which the, the data is picked. So what we do is that the data that the OVC data is reported through an interim in-country data management system which we use to you know in the past, we used it to collect all the data, but because we are still strengthening the OVC MIS, we still have the data entered directly by IPs in this, uh, in this system, plus those extra indicators that are not available in the HMIS system, they are entered here. So we do pick the data by site from the national DHIS2 and undertake a cleaning process with government um, and agree on uh, the results for, for, for the quarter. And then after we have done this um, data cleaning, we merge these data sets and then we tag the, the implementing partner. Now for the implementing partner, because this is, uh, there, is a, there is no implementing partner classification here, uh, there is a data set which we call DAPTS. Eric, what is DAPTS? DAPTS is uh, data for accountability platform for type of support. Yeah, so we collect data from IPs through here that defines uh, which sites they are supporting and what kind of technical areas they are supporting whether they are providing HR or not. So we collect all that data. So we do use that data to tag the facility to the IP. We also um, have um, a, a, a site list which has the DSD TA classification by site. So we, we use that site list also to determine whether the results will be DSD or TA uh, for that partner. And then we have those final files. So once we have those, we have a review, uh, USG reviews, and then we have additional reviews with I implementing partners. We do actually approval outside datum. The inside datum approval is a formality. 
we have all our agreements before we go into debt. So we don't have this thing of push it back. It's not there. We agree outside datum and then do the um, coding, data validation, and we, 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 we provide the exchange file. Or if, if the opportunity comes for us to do the data exchange, we, we will do the exchange at that time. So that's, that's the approach for the, re, for the results. Now, for the COP, we are the source of, of the data. We do not pick the data from anywhere. So what we do, we, 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 we get data sets, the PEPFAR data sets, the national data sets, um, and then go through a process for taking strategic decisions um, which influence the budget, and then we determine the IM and district targets. The USG here collaborates with the ministry, there the are consultations with CSOs and so on and also some consultations with IPs. Now the site level target setting is an entirely an IP uh, based uh, activity. We have, um, we, have, uh, we, have, we have generated some methodology documents so the IPs have uh, used that one to really generate the IM level indicators by, by site and then we get those files uh, do the reviews with the IPs and do the approvals outside of dating and then we go through the process for coding and validation and then uh, uh, data, data exchange. So that, that's, that's our process for, 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 for the reporting. Now, um, dating uh, is a very, very welcome system. I think we need to applaud uh, the dating team and OGA for this. Should we give them a hand clap? Please. It's a very welcome system. Of course, it, there are issues and challenges, but uh, there are a lot of positive aspects about, about, about dating. Um, I don't know whether you agree with me. Um, um, in Uganda, by the time we, the dating system came on board, we had already agreed that we are going to be um, uh, moving away from a parallel system to supporting the national system. We had already given directives to the IPs, uh, support the site to understand uh, the DHIS2 variables and how to generate them, support them to report on time, support the district to enter data. So at that time we were trying to compare what was coming from, from this system here from this system here with what was in the DHIS2. So we kept on comparing that. Now when dating came, uh, it, it actually supported us in enhancing this move to uh, the, national, the, national, the, the national system. So um, that's one of the strengths uh, of dating. Then of course in country we already had ideas on more routine review of our data so now when we, we get into you know one repository for all the data that we have reported across periods that is easy to analyze it, it makes that a little bit more more easier so those are the benefits that we have had from from dating and, and as you know we have found it easy to navigate there are very clear procedures for users uh, for users and administrators it's flexible, simple, scalable, it has user-friendly tools, it provides automated reports and analysis, and it has actually improved our communication on MER indicators and reporting, um, and it also enhances, you know, d d decisions. There's, there are quicker ways to make decisions when you have this data in one place, everybody in every agency will generate a table and if you have generated it in the same way you'll get the same results rather than using excel files you have different versions and you know you have different data points um, and of course um, it also has tools for, for validation and I thank you so much for sharing those uh, validation scripts they have been very very helpful in enhancing our process um, it is not without challenges though um, there are some indicator specific issues that we want to raise. Uh, currently, 
we do not have uh, final age disaggregations that PEFA requires available in the, our national system. Uh, we do have age as a variable in the registers, but DHIS2 is based on the summary. So collecting data for final age disaggregations means that you are going to go and calculate the indicators again. And yet we have already agreed with the government that you know, we are abandoning the paper specific system. So that brings in um, a challenge. And of course, uh, there are a few um, reporting issues and the gaps. Uh, there are mechanisms that are not providing MER indicator based services. So when we are brought partners together, they kind of feel left out. In our past system, they would answer a few questions for every technical area or maybe show their support through a, a, a qualitative narrative. But DATUM doesn't have uh, that, that kind of um, approach. Then the other thing is that there is a lot of burden that um, DATUM and the MER reporting actually uh, has proved it to, to, to push onto onto the country team we are supposed to do data by dsd ta do narratives by dsd ta by site by im so it's, it's quite a lot of um, um requirement and there's a lot of reporting burden now in terms of systems issues um we have uh, observed that the system uh, there are snap snaps when displaying um, um downloads or large um, data sets um, uh, Solomon do you want to speak to that I think this is uh, uh, a challenge to everyone when you try to display a uh, huge data sets like which are going uh, the sales are more than 200,000 on a pivot table of course always gives you that snaps uh, window which probably I hope the OGAC team is probably working on. Thank you. And um, Joseph Mwangi, do you want to speak about the visualizing data issues, challenges? Joseph M. <coughs> Not sure what to say except that yes, we want to see <laughs> we want to see data. We want to see it in various forms. When we go to mission directors and. Uh, uh, senior uh, decision makers, uh, we don't want to show these uh, t tables with HTC, t TST, and other things like that. We want to go with, we have charts in there, but you know, if we can be trained more to use the charts and to be able to manipulate and change and the flexibility involved in that. Okay. Um, other system issues is that uh, data entry screens get distorted when um, you're using datum, so it makes it problematic to use uh, the, the, the system. And we have seen some unexplained changes in data, um, specifically for the SNU uh, attributes. Um, you know, because this time round we could not exchange it, we did it manually, so we looked at, uh, and thank you, uh, Mark, for that video. It was very, very helpful in downloading that data. We were able to relate what was in Datum with our source data. We found errors. We went in and corrected those errors again. But then when we went in to get the, the, the tables and related that to the original data set to identify if we had corrected errors, we identified more errors. And yet, when you did um, track who made the last change, there was no additional change. So we are wondering why, and this is something that we have talked with the, with the team, maybe because we are building the ship as we sail, someone somewhere could have, you know, tickled something. Um, so uh, we, that's something that needs to also be investigated. And then, of course, uh, this ad uh, user administrator issue, which I, I raised in the previous um, in the previous um, uh, session. And then, sometimes we have been able to access information for other countries, which I think is another issue that may need to be like if you are looking for a list of mechanisms, you could easily see sometimes a mechanism that doesn't belong to Uganda coming through. 
to our space. So I guess the, 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 that, needs, that is something that needs to be, you know, um, investigated. And then there has been also variability of access to the test server. You know, when you are doing data, data exchange, you have to keep on doing, uh, you have to do a lot of tests. But sometimes when they are doing updates, you know, you are locked out of access to the test server. You have to keep on. Uh, that's, that's one of the other system issues. Now, in terms of um, uh, analytics, um, we think that the process for generating uh, pivot tables uh, is a very, very complicated. The way the indicators are um, actually defined, you, s you have to spend a lot of time to pick what you need to pick in order to generate your pivot table initially. Fortunately, if uh, the, the issue of favorites might, uh, might, might solve that, but I think there could be simpler ways to to, to, to you know to pick the data if we can have like a technical area indicators numerator or denominator disaggregation so that you actually pick what you want from somewhere and then you uh, an easier way to generate those tables we we think through drop downs should be developed um, and of course those are those are just explanations for that um, and it has been difficult to generate data sets that have multiple variables and multiple dimensions up to the up to date so that's another thing that we, we may want to think about and then of course for data reporting review and approval we do have very limited time for data exchange like like we said yesterday we have the data on the 30th day and then we have two days to download it clean it up discuss with the ministry and then Thereafter, we have only two days to prepare the coded files. So, it's, uh, and you know, we are always given a deadline one week before the actual reporting dates. It's a quite, the, the fortunate thing is that we are in different time zones, so we can work at night while consulting our colleagues back in the US, but it's kind of stressful. Uh, and of course, um, the other gap we have found is that sometimes after submission, you realize there are a few errors that you want to clean immediately, but there is limited guidance on how we can do that and do it and do, and do it quickly. But of course, we as a country have made some recommendations for ourselves. We are developing a detailed in-country specific data exchange quite assurance manual. Uh, using you know the experience of where we have seen the points at which we have errors, the processes where we have errors, so we will be having more explicit data quality assurance processes before submission. Um, and of course, um, we want to develop root and routinely update and use standards in country uh, um, standard in country data elements and IM coding, such that you know it, these coding errors. Um, are less um, seen in our data sets and of course we are also developing some in-country target setting tools to ease the process for target setting especially at the site level in order also to you know save more time for uh, the submission processes and of course we want to generate and share standards favorites for use by teams and I, I'm happy that uh, you know the headquarter team is kind of going to be supporting this idea and for OGAC and uh, the AQ team uh, we are suggesting that you provide room for the qualitative reporting for these above site um, um, mechanisms then of course reviewing um, the reporting requirements and I guess this fits well with the MER revision, but we think that if we can, you know, reduce the burden, like if, you, if I'm an IM and you ask me to give one narrative for the entire technical area, rather than every indicator, DSD, TA, it's just too much, and some of those are actually repetitive. And then we are suggesting that maybe you do a systems operational review to address the system challenges, some of which we have actually identified and a system user enhancement review to improve user friendliness and of course to um, review controls on in-country data exchange because if we were doing data exchange ourselves then we can pick data from the live system and 
be able to address some of the errors that we, we, we kind of missed and I think would also save time. We'll leave some feedback on um, the, um, when you expect that you allow countries to do that exchange directly. Um, and then we also think that we should integrate features that allow easy access to multiple data sets and variables without system, without system snaps. Um, so generally this is our presentation. There are a lot of other issues that we are already raised by our colleagues and we have already showed our uh, agreement uh, with them. Jennifer, I don't know whether you want to add something. Anna, you want to add something? Okay, Jennifer, you want to add something? No, okay, Anna? No. Okay, so maybe we can invite a few um, suggestions, questions, additions, subtractions. Well, first I'd like to thank you, Joseph, and the Uganda team for this presentation. <laughs> maybe one or two questions before we move on? Okay, thank you for your presentation. Uh, as you know, we are in Cote d'Ivoire, we have about uh, 800 sites, and we, we want to uh, move towards this kind of system. Uh, my question is on the data mapping. And how have you done, it? How, how do you do this data mapping? It is site by site, uh, manually, or? automatically is done. Okay. Um, just to um, respond to our colleague, uh, what we do, we have got a, uh, an Ipsy list which has got all the sites in their hierarchies from the district, the sub-counties, and, and, and the, the, the team court the DHIS2 code and all other system codes. So we have that one list, but we also have other lists that we, 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 we also have created, like we have good standard, we have um, gone into Datim and downloaded all the, all the data element UIDs by, uh, by, different, uh, by each data element, so we have that comprehensive list. So what happens is that when we get data, for example, from the national system, and we have um, uh, finally cleaned it, all that data is, uh, is mapped onto all these other lists that we have. We, do, we have got some uh, mini uh, semi-automated processes which just map the data to these other lists. The Ipsy list will help you to identify all the, uh, all the UIDs for the different facilities that you have. And of course, these UIDs are mapped back from, um, I mean, they're, they're mapped back to the dating so once we have all this comprehensive list, we are able to be able now to import the data into um, DATIM. Thank you. All, we also have uh, mapped um, the, the relational um, linkages between the national DHIS2 and the MER indicators. Because sometimes in the DHIS2, the variables there do not equal to the MER. So we have defined how these relationships are and therefore we do that mapping every time we are going to do um, uh, reporting. We also have a standard list of IM um, codes and we know which IM is providing services in which facility, in which district. So it's also easy to do that mapping for, for the IM. And that might actually be a good segue to those who are breaking out into the data import session, because those are exactly the sorts of concepts that we talk in in there. A lot of these linkages and mapping between in-country lists and PEPFAR lists, and there's a lot of work involved there. Yeah. Maybe one more comment or question? <laughs> Joseph, thanks again. Thank you, Uganda team. This was great. Thanks.